Subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for future videos. 10 Important Considerations Before You Follow Jesus Nine years ago in my early 20s, I would have laughed at the person who'd predicted that I'd be an unashamed, enthusiastic, passionate follower of Jesus Christ. Before placing saving faith in Christ as my Lord and Saviour, I cherished independence, my sinful lifestyle and pleasures, and everything the world had to offer me without repercussion. When I put my faith in Jesus Christ, my heart changed dramatically, but it wasn't until I opened my Bible that I understood what it meant to follow him. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Jesus repeatedly commands, follow me. While most of these instances specifically called the 12 men who would become his disciples, other cases show Jesus was calling anyone throughout the ages who wanted what he had to offer them. The same words personally invite us today, follow me. But this invitation goes beyond adapting new habits, embracing Christian beliefs, and living moral lives. The scriptures give ample evidence of what we should consider. Before you follow Jesus, reflect on these 10 important considerations. Number one, be willing to obey and submit. Following Jesus does not mean you live independently from yourself. Christ's followers trust fully obey and submit to his will by faith, even when it exceeds understanding. In John chapter 14 verse 23, Jesus says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Number 2. Be prepared to endure hardship. Are you prepared to endure hardship for Christ's cause? Following Jesus means hardship is not only a possibility but a guarantee. But James 1 verse 12 explains, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. As we endure hardship, we can be assured of Christ's provision for it. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Number 3. Be ready to see the ugliness of your scene. Walking with Jesus Christ means seeing the scene he reveals, confronting it, and asking for forgiveness. You will continue to fall short daily, and that can be frustrating for believers who assume that following Christ is equivalent to perfection. As you still succumb to temptations and earthly pleasures, you will find that having a new heart means you have a new awareness and sensitivity to scene when you never did before. But take heart, friend. Christ's perfect sacrifice has covered us from condemnation, and he will supply you with the strength you need to flee from sin. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too must count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Number 4. Know that the world will not always accept you. When you truly know Jesus Christ, it's hard to fathom how others won't receive him and his followers. But Jesus doesn't shield us from this sobering reality. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If the world is not walking with him, they are fighting against him. Therefore, as his follower, you will find yourself in similar situations of persecution, misunderstanding, condemnation, unacceptance, hostility, and oppression. Amongst the world's antagonism, cling to what Peter and the apostles acknowledged in Acts 5 verse 29. We must obey God rather than men. Number 5. 
be willing to step outside your comfort zone. Christians are called to seek justice, defend the helpless, and serve the Po. None of these commands can be accomplished by sitting quietly in your home. Whether you are comfortable with the Lord's commands or not, you will be challenged to speak up when you are scared, intimidated, or uncomfortable. Jesus isn't saying you must be full of doctrinal knowledge or a spiritual superstar to do these things. No, Jesus calls us to a willing and obedient heart that follows wherever he leads. Number 6. Prepare to be held accountable. Through Christ's ultimate sacrifice on the cross, and by faith in him, your sins have been cleared from your record. But this doesn't mean you have the freedom to take Christ's sacrifice for granted and continue sinning. You will still stand before God's judgment seat, giving an account of your actions to him. Not only must you remain accountable to God, but to others in the body of Christ. Accountability seems intimidating, but it is a gift from God to help us walk the right path. Number 7. Accept him at his word. Your limited humanity means you will not always understand God's sovereignty. You will question why he allows suffering, where he is in the silence, and why your prayers seemingly go unanswered. But you have not been instructed to fully understand. You are to walk by faith, acknowledging that his ways are higher than yours and that his thoughts are greater than yours. Number 8. Leave things behind. Ephesians 4 tells us to no longer walk how we used to, because our understanding was darkened, we were excluded from God, we were ignorant, and our hearts were hardened. But we don't know Christ in this way anymore, because we have heard his truth and listened. Therefore, we are to put aside our old self, prior to knowing Christ, and to put on our new self, which is now in the likeness of God. Faith in Christ demands a radical change in your lifestyle from the way you once behaved. It may mean removing yourself from people or situations that ultimately do not glorify God, and this can be challenging. Number 9. Expect to be humbled. Philippians 2 tells us that followers of Christ do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but humbly count others more significant than themselves and look to the interests of others. Christians are to walk humbly because Christ himself did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant. Boasting in our weakness seems counterintuitive to our culture but it is our duty as Christ's followers. Number 10. Prepare to love. At first glance, this final consideration sounds easily achievable. But in loving as Christ did, this means you cannot be selective about who you love. Following Jesus means loving without condition. But don't be confused. Loving here means loving in action, not feelings. You may not be able to feel love for your obnoxious neighbor or spiteful relative, but you are still commanded to love them. John 13 verses 34 and 35 spell this out. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. By loving others in spite of their sin, the world will see something different in you, and that beautiful difference is that you are a follower of Jesus Christ, unconditionally loved by him through his gospel of grace. Please rate the video, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for future videos. And if you want to support this channel, you can click on the join button below. The video is free to use on your channel without giving me any credit. God bless you all.